In this video, I will finally be answering whether a narrow tire or a wide tire is better on snow and ice. Firstly, why are we even having this argument? Well, there are two contrasting theories, both of them technically correct, coming at different sides of the coin. The first, and this is the one you'll most often hear from the internet experts, is that a narrower tire puts more pressure in contact with the surface below, thus generating more grip. Now this is technically correct for physical grip, but it ignores the fact tires also produce grip through chemical interactions and that a tire's footprint actually changes as the tire gets narrower, the footprint gets longer. It's a bit of a shame that this one isn't strictly true because if it was, a LaFerrari or any other hypercar would be running around on these 205 wide tires, which would look hilarious. The contrasting argument is that a wider tire just puts more down, more compound in contact with the surface, generating more grip, for an all-season and winter tyre, more sipes, which are the little cuts in the rubber that give the tyre edges to cut into the surface and grip, and everything else being equal, a wider tyre will have more void in the tread pattern to pack in snow, and as snow grips snow, that also gives its advantage. As this has been quite a difficult one to work out, I've needed the help of a tyre company, and thankfully, Hankook Tyres have once again stepped up and helped out, so a huge thank you to Hankook. They have provided all the way from a 205 wide tyre on a 16 inch wheel, up to a 275 wide tyre on a 19 inch wheel, and they did all the maths about wheel sizes, spacers, and everything needed for this BMW 3 Series. The tyres are slightly different. The smallest is the Hankook Winter Icept RS3, and then the bigger three, and one of my favourite winter tyres, the Hankook Icept Evo 3. So, excellent winter tyres to be getting on with this, Let's finally find out. Let's get on with the testing. For snow handling, I started with the smallest and ran to the biggest and then looped back round to the smallest for verification. So that means I started with the 205 on the 16 inch wheel, moved to the 225 square on the 18 inch wheel, then moved to the 255 square on a 19 inch wheel, and then I put the 275 just on the rear. Now we couldn't fit 275 all the way around sadly, but it will give us some interesting data points, especially during the traction test I'll do later. Starting with the smallest, the 205. Now this is quite a small wheel and tire for this car, but you know what, it felt great. We know the RS2 is a good winter tire and everything just felt easy, it felt like it had good levels of grip. If anything, compared to the best tires, it did feel a little bit disconnected, a little bit more disconnected than the bigger wheel sizes. And that was especially noticeable on turning where you were just, you were just kind of guessing a little bit more when the car would actually turn and there was a slight delay, but the benefit of the higher sidewall was this track isn't perfectly smooth and there are some ups and downs and some undulations and over those it was the least affected. So some of the other tyres would break into understeer or oversteer as the surface undulation changed but the smaller one just soaked up. It felt the most stable mid corner but it just felt a little bit more disconnected. Switching to the slightly wider 225, now this was the biggest jump subjectively but I've got to use the word biggest a little bit carefully because it was very small. The turning was a bit crisper. So the car, you turned, it just felt a little bit more crisper on initial turning, but then it would pick up understeer a little bit more quickly. The overall connectiveness, is that a word? How connected you felt to the driving experience was improved. And I imagine that that's largely to do with the much smaller sidewall going from a 60 profile to a 45 profile and the bigger wheel size but the differences were incredibly tiny. In fact, I even wrote in my notes, if this is the differences between the 205 and the 225, I'm not really gonna have much to talk about. Foreshadowing, maybe, probably correct. Moving to the 255 square, yes, you've guessed it. Everything was just a little bit more direct. Very, very difficult to notice between the 225 and the 255, even with that extra width and the extra inch of wheel size and you just had to be a little bit more delicate and a little bit more prepared with your actions because when we went from grip to no grip to that transition sliding period, it was just a little bit more abrupt and it happened a little bit more quickly, but the margins are very small. Interestingly, when I put the 275 wide on the rear, the balance almost came back or the, the progressiveness stepped up a little bit on the rear axle. The 275 just slid a little bit more nicely it gave you a tiny bit more control. I guess it felt more like the 225 or even the 205. That big wide rear tire just allowed you to play gracefully with the rear, which I really enjoyed. The differences were, however, I'm gonna remind you, extremely small. Now at this point, you're probably screaming at me for times, which is completely fair, you've listened to me talk. I'll put them on screen now. The entire difference between the narrowest and the widest was a massive 1.8%. And it wasn't actually the narrowest that was quickest, it was the 225, so one of the middle sizes. 
Now, this 1.8% is smaller than the differences between a bad winter tire and a good winter tire, or a good winter tire and an excellent winter tire. So, so far, for snow handling at least, there's, there's just no, no point worrying about what tire size you pick, but there is lots of point worrying about what tire you pick. But let's go and see if I change my mind during traction testing. Traction and braking turned out to be quite interesting. Snow Traction had the narrow 205 wide tyre offering the best 0 to 35 kph times at 6.35 seconds, which was nearly 5% better than the 225 and over 6% better than the 255 and the 275 could manage. So it seems that the narrower tyre can't quite turn as well, but longitudinally it offers more grip. But wait! Snow braking had the 225 back at the front, almost matching the 255, with the narrowest tyre now the worst, 4.5% behind. So that is not what I expected. What about ice? Well, ice testing is even more difficult than snow, so we ran the group twice, which resulted in over 100 acceleration and braking runs for the four configurations to ensure the data is as pure as it possibly could be. The results? Well, the narrow 205 was back at the front offering the best traction, and the narrow 205 was back at the back offering the worst braking again, pretty much mirroring what we found on the snow. Maybe averaging things out will help us get a better picture. Excluding snow handling, the narrowest tire was the best in the snow, with the widest being the worst. When we averaged out ice performance, the narrowest tire was also the best, but this time the widest combination of tires was second best, and the 225 that did so well in snow struggled more on ice. So let's finally average out the directions. The narrow tyre does have a clear advantage in both the traction tests, so this is at least one result I'm happy with. The narrower tyre is just better in traction. However, when we averaged out braking, it was clearly the worst, which just still doesn't quite make sense to me. Overall, from all the testing, the narrowest tyre scored the most points, but as I've stressed a number of times at this point, the testing was extremely close and you'll find a bigger variance between a bad and a good winter tyre than the differences we have in this test. The obvious elephant in the room is the different tread patterns on the narrow 205. Sadly, this was the only way of getting this range of sizes possible, but if we just look at the 225, 255 and 275, which all have the same tread pattern, it's fair to say that width just doesn't really matter at all. And since filming this at the start of the year, I've seen some other tests and they've sound exactly the same. So what can we learn from all this testing? Well, I think there's three key takeaways here. In terms of handling, in terms of outright grip around the handling lap, there was almost nothing in it. Yes, there were some subjective differences between the 16 inch and the 19 inch, but this has got a very high sidewall. So that's what gives you that subjective handling difference. In terms of outright performance, if you look at a winter tire test, there was less of a difference between these two as there was between a very good winter tire and just a good winter tire. So I don't think you can really decide a width is better for handling or not. In terms of traction, the narrow tire definitely seemed a little bit better, both on snow and ice. But in terms of braking, which was essentially reverse traction, it didn't quite live up to the wider tires. Just to quickly drive home that point, I have the data from this year's Tire Reviews winter tire test, which was tested at the same time on the same vehicle at the same location. In that comparative test of 11 winter tires, even ignoring the cheap budget tire, the delta between a good and bad winter tire and snow handling was over six seconds a lap, whereas in this test, it was just two seconds. In snow traction, it was a three quarters of a second difference. Here it was half a second. And in snow braking, there was a three meter difference. Whereas we had just a difference of half a meter in this test between the same tire in different sizes. Most people will not have the option of a 205 or a 275 wide winter tire in their vehicle. They'll be looking at the differences of maybe 20 millimeters, a 205 or a 225 or a 225 and even a 255. That's probably quite rare in the real world as well. That means the differences between these, these or these is essentially nothing. So stop worrying about how wide your winter tire is and start worrying about how good the winter tire you're fitting is because that's gonna make a much bigger difference. Fit a winter tire like this Hankook Winter Icept Evo 3. It's an outstanding winter tire, as is this RS3. So Hankook are making some exceptional winter tires and their all season and summer tires are excellent too. Thank you so much to Hankook for supporting this test. Let me know what you've decided from all the data, whether you're gonna try and size down. You know what, it does make sense to fit a narrower winter tire in the winter because you can put a smaller wheel on and protect your big alloy. So on a car like this, maybe you're running a 19 inch or an 18 inch wheel on a 255, and maybe you wanna to go to a 225 on a 16 or 17 inch steel wheel just to protect your summer wheels. That has a lot of merit. But in terms of widths, just stop worrying about it. Pick a good winter tire, not a wide winter tire or a narrow winter tire. 
Anyway, let me know your thoughts. Any questions, please ask below. And as always, safe motoring.